What is up guys? Welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. If you guys are stopping in for the first time, don't forget to subscribe. We have a truck giveaway coming up in just a handful of days here and I'm super, super stoked to offer up all the merch that we're gonna have available for all kinds of people. It does not matter if you have been subscribed very long and you don't really know what the true meaning of Team LNP is. Um, we're gonna have options for you guys and it's gonna be absolutely awesome. Just some humorous stuff, some cool stuff that everybody is gonna make you smile and be like, that's a cool piece of merch. I gotta have that. So, anyways, guys, all that aside, we are back in the shop here working on the 12 valve Cummins dually. The last, I, I kind of thought it was gonna take, you know, uh, one day and then it kind of turned into two days. But we are on day three out here in the shop. It's just kind of tough with all the other work. That's also another reason why I cut back to every other day for my YouTube videos is because I've got other responsibilities to take care of, you know. But, anyways, we are going to be continuing working on the 12 valve dually. What we're gonna to try to do today, and I really, really hope we can get this done, is we're gonna change out the valve springs, that's the goal, and then also put the new injectors in this thing, which are the 120 horse DAP SAC injectors, and super excited for that. So, uh, yeah, we've got the injectors sitting right here, and then we've got the valve springs, Right, I've done valve springs before, nothing new to me. Definitely gonna be cool, okay? So, I'm uh, really excited to get these put in this truck. And, and you definitely wanna do the valve springs, especially if you're doing a 4K kit. So if you're gonna be doing a 4K kit on this with bigger injectors and a bigger turbo and stuff like that, you wanna make sure you do your valve springs, okay? So, um, don't forget about all the key components when it comes to building a truck like this. All this stuff, all that aside, I'm gonna get to removing the valve covers right now, setting this all up and getting ready to go and getting this stuff done. And uh, hopefully we can get this all done and get this truck fired up today would be absolutely fantastic. I'm going to show you what I got done so far. Both sets of valve springs in cylinder six, three, and one. So I kind of did three, then I went to one, then I went to six. I don't know if it matters, but since I'm taking out head bolts and putting them back in, um, I figured I'd start in the middle, then go to the outside, then go to the far outside. Now I'm going to do this one closer, two, and then I'm going to go back to five, and then also um, four. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm almost halfway done with them. I've done three out of the six. Um, but it's taken me a couple of hours just because it's super hot and I've got the worst pounding migraine I've had in years. So my whole body like hurts. So it, it's not good. So um, I'm going to go and being 85 degrees out plus doesn't really help right now either. So um, I'm still going to try to finish this today. I just need to go inside and lay down and take a break in the AC because yeah, my whole body hurts and when that's going on, it just makes these projects much less enjoyable and they should be fun to do for the most part. So um, I will catch you guys back in a bit. I'm back out here in the shop. I went inside, I took a quick one hour nap in the basement where it was cold and I got probably 80% of my migraine gone. So I was out here working, getting some more stuff done. Another nice thing about doing this every other day stuff is like look outside, it's sun's going down, it's getting dark, but I don't have to worry about trying to, you know, oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up and work and work and work and try to get a video, you know, a video up today still, you know, so I really do appreciate that and thank you for everybody who understands, you know, the every other day video thing. I'm enjoying what I'm doing so much more. I'm still working on the truck every day for the most part, but it gives me a day kind of bumper to, you know, make sure I like what I did, make sure I have enough time to edit my videos the way I want, and also it gives me time to do other work around the place um, that I'd like to do as well. So it's all good stuff. And anyways, I just finished doing all the 60 pound valve springs. Everything looks pretty darn good. The only thing I have to do now is check my valve lash. And if you look through here and you go through here, every single one of these are pretty much tight. So um, I'm guessing it has to do with putting the heavier uh, valve springs in there, but I don't know for sure. 
but they are all pretty much front to back, pretty snug. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the engine down by the harmonic, uh, I kind of get balancer and dampener mixed up. I think it's a harmonic dampener. You know, the big thing down there at the very bottom, the heavy disc looking thing. Anyways, sorry. To define top dead center for number one, what you're gonna do is to adjust valve lash is what we're gonna do now. So we can have the proper, you know, gap there set. Uh, when we start up our diesel engine and it's running at, you know, normal temperatures, it's not, you know, uh, creating issues with our valves and creating gaps and other stuff like that that could lead to uh, some major issues. So um, what we're going to do is by adjusting the valve lash, we're going to find top dead center for number one by watching number six and one the very back one, which I think is your exhaust, I believe, your exhaust um, rocker arm, when that's go your exhaust valve, sorry, when that's starting to go up and the other one's starting to go down at the exact same time, they're just starting to go the opposite ways, that should be um, the sign that number number one will be a top dead center. You're going to adjust your valve lash on half of them and then what you're going to do is check for top dead center on number six by, you know, following the same step until this one is just starting to go up and this one's, you know, just starting to go down um, at the exact same time. Then you're going to do the other half and check all the valve lash for those as well. So um, that's all we're going to do right now. And then after that, it's time to slap some injectors in here. It's been a busy day and it just feels that much more overwhelming because of the migraine I had all day which was just awful. Um, I don't get those rarely like maybe once a year I get like a bad one but that was that was bad so um, but I'm feeling a lot better now so what we're gonna do is get to set this valve lash and get it knocked out. I don't know how much I'm gonna get on camera because I've kind of done this before um, but yeah so oh yeah and one other thing. For your intake which is your front one you want 10,000 of an inch um, and then for your rear one um, your exhaust, you want uh, two, uh, 20 thousandths of an inch, sorry. Um, so that's how you use that measurement. That's how you're going to do that measurement. And what you're going to use are these feeler gauges. Okay. I'm going to kind of show you what I got here. I left a set of these in the description under the video when I originally did this on Nasty Reds. Um, but yeah, you can pick these up at Menards, your local hardware, hardware store. Just a basic set of feeler gauges, comes with all the stuff you need for the most part, pretty much everything you're ever going to need for this kind of a truck. Um, and then after that, that's it. Just measure it with the right one. And you you don't want it to be like to where you can't get the feeler gauge underneath, but you don't want it to be freely, loosely under there either. You want it to be to where there's just a real slight drag. You can almost see like a little, you know what I'm saying? Just a real light drag. Um, so there's a little resistance, but not like, you know, to where you have to force it through, if that makes sense. I don't know. Um, but that's the idea of it. It's uh, In my mind, I'm explaining it perfectly, but when I actually say it, it sounds a little bit not the way I thought it would sound. So it's, I don't know if you guys can relate, but in my mind, I, kn I know what I'm doing. So anyways, we're going to get this done and then get to the fun part, which is going to be some injectors. I didn't get any time lapse of it, but I did get all the valve lash done and set. And I think it turned out just perfect. Of course, right now it's on set on top dead center for cylinder six. So I just have a little diagram here I pulled off of Google the forum, but if you guys haven't seen it, here it is. When number one is on top dead center, number six is that crossover, which means um, the back one is just starting to go down and the closer one, which is your intake valve, is just starting to barely go up. And that's top dead center for number one. So when top dead center is on up, when top dead center is set on number one, you can do intake one and two, exhaust one, three, and five. And for exhaust, you're going to be looking at the measurement that I gave you before, which is 20 thousandths of an inch. For intake, you're doing 10 thousandths of an inch. Um, and then for top dead center number six, of course, which is what it's set at right now, um, number one exhaust is just starting to come up, and number two was just barely starting to go down. So. That's top dead center for number six. I keep saying top dead and top dead center. I don't know why, like my words just kind of slurring out like that. Anyways, um, top dead center for number six. You can then do uh, intake three, five, and six, and then exhaust two, four, and six. So everything right there should be good to go. So now what we're gonna end up doing is I'm going to put the valve covers back on. I'm just gonna make sure if you can see like what I've been doing here. Um, cleaning off these surfaces where the valve cover is going to mount back on into my words. Again, they keep slurring out weird. Um, it's been a long day. It's officially dark. I've been out here since this morning, so it's been a long day out in the shop. Um, but anyways, 
So you wanna make sure all the surfaces are clean, get the valve covers mounted back on. And then all we are going to do next is get the injector set in there, hook up your fuel lines again, hook up the um, fuel line back there that goes to the fuel filter itself. Um, I do have a new fuel filter to put on here as well. But yeah, so, I mean, not a lot left to do, but of course, still stuff. So um, I might just get all this stuff done here and I'll see how much I can get done. Um, but again, it's just kind of one of those things where at this point, um, when it comes to the camera stuff, you guys have seen me take stuff apart and put it back together so many times. So I think I'm just going to, again, get to putting stuff in. So here are our five by 13 SAC injectors from Diesel Auto Power. So I'm gonna show you how to install this first one. They already have the washer on them. Just wanna make a quick, take a quick glance first off and make sure there's not a copper washer from your factory injectors still down in there. If there is, you're gonna have to pick it out with something, but all of mine are cleared. I already made sure of that. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your injector. There's like a little ball on the side here. With that facing the outside of the block, seat that in there. Now that copper washer might fall off down in there, but that's okay because it's, you know, it's the hole's just big enough for that thing, so it's gonna lay perfectly flat anyways. But if you need to pull the injector back out and check just to make sure, feel free. That's where the injector's gonna sit. These right here, okay, these are what are gonna keep it anchored right down there in place. And these are from your factory injectors that you're taking out of it, okay? Um, this is not part of the injector itself, uh, but this kinda helps seat it. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take some anti-seize. You don't need any crazy amount, but just take a little bit of anti-seize and I took some brake wash, uh, brake wash cleaner and cleaned that all up first. Just get a little bit of anti-seize and put it in the threads. That's all, nothing crazy. You're gonna set this over top of your injector. You're just gonna thread that down and then I think, technically the torque spec on this is 44 foot pounds, I believe. Little O-rings that come with it. And this is mainly just to keep anything from falling down in there, you know what I mean? So you're gonna get that, slide it down over that gap around there. You might need a little pick to kind of help persuade it a little bit. And that should be good to go. And then all you're gonna do now is like I said take your wrench and make sure it's torqued down to spec and then uh, on to the next one. It is one in the morning however she's all back together. We got the valve covers on, tightened down, we've got all the, the valve lashes set, the valve springs are in, all the keepers in, didn't drop any keepers this time anywhere near the truck. I actually didn't drop a single thing um, when it comes to like those small fine parts at all throughout the whole day. There's some play in them to where they can bop up and down inside over top of the injector um, for turning it over and letting some fuel spray out. Each time we'll come back around and see which injectors are kind of wet with diesel around them. I'm gonna attempt to start the thing up like I said, everything's been done now in terms of what we're gonna do under the hood of this truck. We've got the 191 delivery valves in, we've got the 4K governor spring kit in, we've got the 60 pound valve springs, 120 horse SAC injectors, which are five by 13s. Which by the way, all these parts, diesel auto power, definitely go check them out right here. I'm wearing the t-shirts, actually wear their, their stuff all the time. Go to dieselautopower.com, check them out. If you guys are looking for a great value, great prices and great quality, go check them out, can't beat them. So anyways guys, we're gonna attempt to turn the thing over. Long story short, this is the next day, about midday. I was trying to turn the truck over last night. I gave it about four 15 second runs. Yes, I primed the pump and everything, and I could not get a single ounce of diesel to come out of any of the fuel lines. And they're all cracked. In fact, they were barely threaded on, just enough to keep them to where they would stay lined up. Uh, but they were, I mean, you know what I mean? And then I tried tightening them down a little bit more to where they're like halfway threaded on then backing them off more, just no diesel coming out of the fuel lines. So I don't know why there's no diesel coming out of the fuel lines. 
but there's not. And then this morning we went out there today, tried to turn it over again. Dad was out there so I could have somebody visually looking under the hood because it's a pain in the butt to do by yourself. So he's looking under the hood and we gave it another four 15 second runs, you know, just run and run and run. Try to prime it in between each time, run it, try to do it twice in a row without priming it, like trying to make sense of it. No diesel coming out of any of the fuel lines and everything's connected back together. All the boost lines hooked up to the back of the AFC housing, all the fuel lines, there's no fuel lines disconnected from the filter. Like every, everything is hooked back up. I can't figure it out. It could be the smallest, dumbest little thing as to why it's not firing off. I don't know what to look for. You know what I mean? Everything that I took out, I reinstalled everything perfect. Everything's back in. Like I don't get why it won't fire off. So it's it's weird. It's I don't I don't understand it. So this helps you guys understand there's no fuel coming out of the fuel lines. And I even cracked them off right over top of the delivery valves. I cracked off the fuel lines there and slid up the little um, threaded section that kind of slides up and down a little bit there on the line. There's no diesel on the little, where they're supposed to feed into the lines to then feed the injectors. There's no fuel sitting up in there, which there usually always is. You know, when you take those lines up, there's fuel sitting there, so there's no fuel there either. All I know is I've got so much on my mind, so much happening. Oh, I just didn't, I don't need another thing. Like it could be, like I said, guys, it could be some stupid, something really small. You know what I mean? Because how does a truck run? Perfect. I mean, that dually every day. You go start up, starts off like a dime, starts off faster than the first one. It's just like you touch the key and it's running. You know what I mean? So I don't know why there's there's no fuel going through the line. I installed everything perfect. You know what I mean? Like, but it's not like the truck's getting fuel and it won't fire. It's not getting fuel. Like there's no fuel coming out of the fuel lines. Like, cause I know I'm still gonna have people comment, oh, well, it's probably the injectors, not the injectors. Cause there's no fuel coming out of the fuel line, so they don't even have a chance to fire off, you know what I'm saying? Lots going on, and then the giveaway starting next week. Yeah, kinda hectic. If you guys have any helpful suggestions for me, it's just not getting fuel. I don't know why it's not getting fuel, but it's not getting fuel. I told my dad, I was like, this install went like the smoothest, it was a full day's work, but that was the smoothest install I'd had. Like, I was exhausted, I had a migraine, I was tired, but like in terms of, problems that occurred in terms of working on the truck. That was like the smoothest install I've, I'd ever done on all that stuff. Everything just went picture perfect in terms of just like, not my condition that I was in when I was doing it, but um, in terms of like everything going together, it was just, it was like a puzzle. It was just like perfect. You know what I'm saying? Camera just died on me again. My card is completely maxed out. Um, but anyways, guys, don't know where to start. If you guys can help me out as to why my truck's not getting fuel through the lines, definitely let me know because that seems to be the only problem. There's just no fuel flow through the lines. So anyways, guys, if you guys can help me out, that would be absolutely fantastic. I will catch you guys soon. A lot of stuff coming up. It's going to be a super busy month. Just lots going on. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you're new. Join the team. Join the family. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.